used by the Women's International Council of Canada for use around the world, with the intent to stand in solidarity with each other through prayers and action. Today we will use parts of the provided service, which was prepared by a group of ecumenical Palestinian Christian women who were assigned the theme, I beg you, bear with one another in love, inspired by Ephesians chapter 4. Over the last four years, through COVID, they worked, prayed, reflected, and wrote today's service. On October the 12th, 2023, so just last fall, the WDP Palestinian Committee shared these words. In these trying times, let us remember that the human experience transcends borders and political differences. We must stand together as one global community advocating for the welfare and dignity of every individual, irrespective of their nationality, religion, or origin. Together, we can work towards a brighter and more harmonious future for all in this troubled region. So as we observe the World Day of Prayer, our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to those suffering in Israel and Palestine. And we hold steadfast to the hope that one day, the people of this land will enjoy peace and prosperity. Many churches celebrated World Day of Prayer on Friday, March the 1st, but we have chosen to observe this special day today on a Sunday so that more people will have the opportunity to share in, learn from, and be inspired by the Palestinian women who have spent several years putting this service together. Several of our own congregation members will assist in leading worship this morning as this has traditionally been a service created and led by women. So in that spirit, I invite Phyllis to come and lead us in our call to worship. Let us praise God who brings us together to worship in love and unity. Let us remember these essential qualities of people of faith, humility, gentleness, patience, and love. Let's pray together. Our opening prayer is a traditional Palestinian song entitled Iraba Salami, or in English, God of Peace. Let's pray. God of peace, come among us. Rain down your peace on the world. Make a path for your goodness. Fill every heart with your peace.
brother Ray about tornadoes. <laughs> I learned a lot about tornadoes last time he was here. <laughs> Matthew, what do you worry about? Can't think of anything? What do you worry about, folks? Everything. So I've got some of these written here, but this bin and these pens are on the back table normally, and so I would encourage all of you to write some things on, uh, on these little black slips and to, we've been creative here. Some of these are woven in and some of them are just poked in. But however you can get them into this symbol, I would encourage you to add your prayers to our prayer wall. Do you remember what this symbol is? Were you here when I talked about it before? What's this symbol, Liliana? Pardon? And. And do you remember why we're using it for Lent? Anybody? We're calling this God's holy and. And so throughout these weeks that lead up to Easter, we're talking about again and again God's holy and. And that begins with God's love, and it continues, and it continues, and it continues again and again. God's love is with us. God's love is meeting us and uh, caring for us. And God wants us to take all these things that we worry about that keep us up at night, and hand them over. Isn't that a pretty amazing kind of love? That God loves us so much that no matter what we do, God's love doesn't change. We can't do anything to change God's love. We can't make God love us more or love us less. And God wants us to hand over all those things that keep us up at night and that we worry about. And uh, God wants to take them from us and hold them for us. So... Let's pray, and then you can go off with Tori. She has something fun <coughs> for you this after or this morning. So I invite you to repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving me, thank you for loving me. From, the very beginning. from the very beginning. Thank you for taking my worries, thank you for taking my worries. and filling me with your peace. Help us to start with love in everything I do and say. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. You three can go and uh, have some fun. And 
as Kim is making her way up here to share with us some scripture, we're going to pray. Let's pray. God of the here and now, we have heard the words, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son time and time again. We have read them on billboards, heard them in worship, and seen them on signs. And yet we know there is a difference between hearing these words in passing and truly, deeply listening. We long to listen, God. We long to hear your truth. We long to know your love. Open our hearts and minds. We are listening. Amen. The first scripture reading is taken from John chapter 15, verses 12 to 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. At a crucial moment of his life, Jesus gave the disciples this commandment, love one another, bear with one another in love. In today's service, we will receive three stories from Palestinian Christian women. Each story is a powerful witness to Jesus' call to bear with one another in love. Let us listen now to Eleanor's story. Eleanor's story will be read by Dorothy Richardson. <coughs> My skin is wrinkled like the trunk of an olive tree. Like the tree, I have witnessed many wars and violence. I am a Palestinian Christian, a member of the Greek Orthodox Church in the Holy Land. I came from a deeply rooted old Jerusalem family. In the early 19th century, my great-grandfather established St. George's Orthodox Church which enabled Christians living outside the city walls to have a place to worship. That church remains in existence until the catastrophe, or the Najib, in 1948, when 750,000 Palestinians were forced to flee, disperse, and become refugees. My family was included. Due to heavy shelling and bombardment, my parents ran for their lives. They took shelter at my mother's cousin house, hoping to return soon to their original home in St. George's Church. That never happened. Today, my parents and the St. George's Church has become the Confederation House and Israeli Cultural Center. Prior to fleeing, my parents' Jewish neighbors offered to store the treasures of the church, including icons and precious communion cups. They promised to safeguard my parents' property and belongings until the, the family's return. As my brothers and I were growing up, my parents remembered their neighbors graciously as they waited for the big day of return. They imagined themselves collecting these sacred items and thanking their neighbors for keeping them their promise. Sadly, my parents have passed away without realizing this dream. And yet, I vividly remember that, despite their pain and suffering over all they had lost, my parents were always thankful and spoke kindly about these Jewish neighbors. My parents taught me how to bear with others in love, always remembering to be grateful for those who do good. As I have gone through life as a Palestinian Christian living in Jerusalem, I have chosen to be fully engaged with all members of the community at local, local and global level, levels. I learned from my parents' example how important it is to stay together with others, even when life is harsh and difficult. My commitment to my community started when I was in sixth grade. My Arabic teacher engaged me in running errands for her humanitarian work. She was gentle and
and loving, which helped me grow to value and love working to make life better for others. Later in life, I designed and implemented humanitarian aid and development programs, as well as social and community projects. These programs and projects served all people, regardless of religion, ethnicity, gender, status, or need. I was privileged to help hundreds of women in Jerusalem, the Gaza Strip, and the West Bank to sustain their families as breadwinners. Many of these projects have grown and spread to other areas, positively impacting many lives. Life has not always been easy. I have experienced setbacks, obstacles, and even threats. However, I firmly believe that our community can be strong together if there is genuine love, understanding, gentleness, humility, and patience. Since my childhood, I have known that life is fragile and peace is not a guarantee. I could have left the country of my roots, but I made the choice to stay and live out Jesus' commandments to love others as God has loved me. <clears throat> Second scripture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner, manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Bearing with one another in love is the base for our prayers and lessons today. Reverend Stephen McClellan, former WICC president for Musgrave Town, Newfoundland, and a Caribbean slash North American victim representative on the World Day of Prayer International Executive, will now share a devotional message. few minutes. I thought that this reflection would be hard enough to do, just balancing the tensions of Israel and Palestine with the wars and tension that has been there since Bible times. And now it has escalated into a war that is unimaginable in its scope and devastation. The simplicity of my illustration has been getting caught in my throat as I try to make a point that's not trite or trivial, knowing that there are others who can speak the debate pieces of this issue. The women of the Palestinian Writing Committee for World Day of Prayer use Paul's words in Ephesians, I beg you, that we bear with one another in love. So maybe my small illustration is just what we need as we look with hopelessness and despair, feeling insignificant in our ability to affect change. Watching TV or looking at the news on my screens, the stress gives me knots in my stomach and life seems to be unraveling. If you have one close by, I'd like you to get a bowl of wool to have in your hands as we consider the naughtiness of this world. Israeli and Palestinian relations are all tangled up, to say the very least, and so are many of the relationships in our own lives. Working with the wool in our hands, we come across a knot just see what happens. How long does it take you to get frustrated? What do you do with your frustration? Does anger explode quickly and you throw the whole thing away, giving up? Or do you patiently work finding a release, a knot at a time? 
for the unity of the project. We can't just clip the loops around the knots. We must make our way, easing around the knots, prayerfully and patiently, undoing the tangles, and patiently allowing another stretch of yarn to break free. Looking at the entire challenge all at once, I was frustrated before it even began. But a small knot at a time with prayer held a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. My internship supervisor, as I was studying for ministry, told me a story about his childhood. Eric, his grandmother would call, I need to borrow your arms. So she would get him to come and sit in front of her and hold the yarn so that she could roll it into the ball without it getting tangled in the process. While he was sitting there, a captive audience, she would tell him the most important things about life that she wanted him to know. Peacemakers and those who bear with one another in love need to be put in situations, in places, where they can listen to the stories that shape us. Jews, Christians, and Muslims start with the same origin story, and yet we're divided, unraveled, broken, and frayed. Working for peace is never easy. It's never a quick fix. Truth is, peace can only be forged small scale for it to hold on a global one. I will proclaim that I understand what would work for justice in the Middle East. But I do recognize my responsibility to bear with love and work for peace in this world of injustice. In profound ways, the offering I make added to yours, collected by God, becomes enough. As we talk about how we work together in prayer, not for the love of power, but for the power of love, to address the situations around us each and every day, we will find a way to peace. May God continue to challenge each and every one of us to be a peacemaker in our small corner of the world, individually, locally, and then globally. Because if my small corner changes, it changes the world. We're all called to change our small corner. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen.
Lena's story. On May 11, 2022, I lost my aunt Shireen, a famous journalist who was killed in Yemen. For me, Aunt Shireen was like the branch of an olive tree, resisting the strong winds that threatened to erase the truth of Palestinian experience. When Aunt Shireen died, Palestinian, Palestine lost an icon, a legend and a famous journalist. And yet, Shireen is above all, above all that and more. She was also my aunt, my godmother at baptism, and my best friend. Shireen had been my role model for as long as I can remember. She was also a role model to many young Palestinian women. Growing up, I aspired to be as successful, professional, and as empathetic as she. I will cherish all these moments I spent with her talking about art, politics, and life, watching shows, going on vacations, and spending time with the family. For 25 years, Aunt Shireen dedicated her life to telling the stories of Palestinian experience and to being the voice of truth. She entered every house in Palestine and the Arab world through the TV screen. The day of her funeral was proof that she had also entered the hearts of Palestinians. The outpouring of solidarity we witnessed at her funeral will forever be ingrained in my memory and the collective memory of Palestine. We are forever grateful to the strong and courageous Palestinians who resisted the threats from Israeli forces and carried Shireen's casket on their shoulders. Many people did not know that my aunt was a Palestinian Christian. Shireen's faith led her to bear with all in love, despite differences in faith traditions. She stood with all who were being harmed. She struggled for both Muslims and Christians to have access to the holy sites in Jerusalem. Her truth-telling was even a way of bearing for the occupiers in love. Speaking the truth is a form of loving resistance because it calls the oppressor back to their humanity. Although Shireen, a branch of the olive tree, was cut down too soon, her legacy lives on. Her memory now nourishes the earth from which we will gain strength to continue telling the truth and demanding justice. Hearing this story of a woman who dared to speak her truth in love, let us commit ourselves to the journey, just as she did. I invite Joyful Noise to the front.
We will now hear Nora's story. Based on her interview with the World Day of Prayer International Committee, as well as recent articles that she has authored. Hello, my name is Nora, and this is my story, a story of flourishing. I am Nora from Jerusalem. I was born in Palestine and grew up in Jerusalem, Jordan. Since 1967, I have lived under occupation in Jerusalem. My parents and other family members survived the Armenian genocide, so they know what suffering is and what humans can do to each other. It is not the will of God to see people killed. My grandfather wanted us to look at what suffering does and how we can do things for a better world. For us, he hoped that they will learn to scorn injustice and face hardship, never get discouraged, and become leaders in control of their lives and models of behavior to others. My father's family had been pharmacists in Nicodemia, modern Turkey and lost two pharmacies to the Turks. In Jerusalem, they started a pharmacy with the Haramea family on Mamela Road, which they lost with other possessions in 1948. They were refugees in Lebanon and Syria until the Lutheran World Federation brought back professionals to Jerusalem at the beginning of the 1950s to build up the new reality. My father served at the Augustus Victoria Hospital as a pharmacist and established the X-ray department with Dr. Mohammed Naqib Huzini. How we can do things to create a better world is much more part of the World Day of Prayer. My introduction to the World Day of Prayer was through my mother, who was one of the Armenian readers at a World Day of Prayer service in Jerusalem. I also became a reader. By 1994, which was the year Palestine was invited to write the service, Go, See, and Act, I was nominated by the Armenian Patriarch to represent my church. In 2017, Palestine, again, was invited to write the service. When the World Day of Prayer International Committee chose the theme, because we did not suggest it, they had in mind the situation of the Middle East. We saw it as a message to us personally. How do we bear with one in another in love and unity? An alternative motive was to see if we could bring about understanding in this troubled area. The whole world is troubled, and so the voices of women speaking up loudly not only about their suffering, but also their hope, is really what makes the movement a unique movement. I work for justice. This is the only way to live, respecting others by speaking my mind. When we moved to, uh, when we moved to Jerusalem, we did not want to be secluded. I learned the Menian at home, grew up in the Orthodox faith of the Armenian Apostolic Church, but studied at a Catholic school run by the Sisters of Our Lady of Sion, and then attended Protestant universities. My husband was Greek Orthodox, and I have worked with both the Armenian and Greek Orthodox churches. One of my current prayer requests <coughs> excuse me, for Palestine is the end of the occupation, but it will not bring peace. It is important to take people out of their boxes, for everyone to see people as equals, living in dignity and equality, having real freedom as human beings. Re-education is needed. Let us work together to make sure that global justice is done. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we now pray for women everywhere, for the world and for those in need. After each 
each petition, you will hear me pray, lead us into a life worthy of our calling, and I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of righteousness, bless us and make us witnesses of peace and justice. Open our eyes so that we can see things as you do. Protect us from all forms of violence, hurt, and revenge. We pray especially for women who are denied education and other basic rights. We pray for women who are abused and suffer violence. We pray that our churches, as well as our governments, will create safe places for women. Help us to raise our voices and use our gifts and talents to help others. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. Refugee God, who as a child had to flee massacre in Bethlehem, you know the plight of refugees and the displaced. Remain with us and help us in these dark and difficult times. Guide and protect refugees and displaced people. Bring them to places of safety. Open the hearts of those receiving refugees and guide the actions of political leaders so that all needs will be met. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. God, our rock, you have taught us to build our lives on you. We pray for those who are homeless. We pray especially with Palestinian families whose homes have been demolished or are under threat of demolition by the Israeli authorities. Bring these families justice and end to this cruel practice. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. God of peace, we pray for a just solution to the ongoing conflict. We also pray for the city of Jerusalem, sacred to three religions of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. We pray for equality, freedom of religion, freedom of movement, and freedom of expression. Teach us as Christians to follow the way of Jesus, sharing love with all the inhabitants of the land. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. Healer and sustaining spirit, we pray for all those who are sick, who are dying, and who are grieving. When we are lost and weary, strengthen us. Revive our dry branches so that they yield good fruits again. Give us new life and the hope of resurrection. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. God of mercy, we have carelessly destroyed our beautiful creation. We have harmed the environment, the flora and the fauna, and the creatures of the air, land, and water. Our destruction of the earth has caused the climate crisis. Help us to appreciate and love your creation. Help us to repair what we have destroyed. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. God of unity, your child Jesus prayed that your disciples and followers would be one as you are one. Teach us, your servants, to treat others justly, fairly, and with love, even though we may speak, live, and pray differently. Bless the global church and bless those around the world who share your good news with others. Lead us into a life worthy of our calling. Hear our prayer. How can we thank you, loving God? We know that all our blessings come from you. Do not keep us far from you. Give us grace according to the measure of Christ's gift and fill our hearts with joy. We offer these prayers and the prayers of our hearts known only to you, trusting that you hear and answer them in the name of God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's have a look at our announcements. It's a busy week happening. 
I invite you to stay after church for a time of fellowship and refreshments. And if you are in need of a police check, uh, Tori is here today and she uh, will help you do that online in the gathering room, um, which is this room right here after church today. This week, we are having Bible and movie study each afternoon, Monday through Thursday. Doors open at 1 o'clock, and our program begins at 1.15. Tomorrow, we will show the movie Wonder, and then Brave, The Incredibles, and The Princess Bride. Those are our four movies, and those four movies go with the themes that we have been working through with Lent. So Lent 1 uh, goes with tomorrow's movie, Lent 2 goes with Brave and so on for these four, um, these four days. And so if you're not able to come and join us for the movie at uh, any of those afternoons, Phyllis is going to send a mail out of our whole list. So you can check out those movies and Bible um, stories and see how they work for you and speak to you. Uh, at any time throughout the rest of this Lenten season, but Phyllis is going to send that out with today's uh, service. And then on Saturday night, you are all invited back here for a potluck starting at 5 o'clock, and we're going to watch The Shack together. Um, the Shack is the movie that the youth have just recently watched, and so that's why we've chosen it to hopefully get some great discussion going. The Shack was a little bit controversial when it came out. You may have read the book or seen the movie, but no matter how many times you read the book or see the movie, there's always something new that you didn't notice the last time. So I encourage you to come out and uh, come for dinner and then check out the movie and hopefully a time of discussion afterwards. The lunch bunch is canceled for this week because we're hoping you'll have a sandwich at home and then come and join us for uh, the movie afterwards. And UCW is going to meet and then they're going to hopefully come and join us for the movie as well. Are there other announcements folks would like to draw attention to? Shannon? Um, the fundraising committee just wants to thank everyone who helped with the pancake breakfast. Uh, it was a huge success and we've made over, we've made $1,300 so far. We are going to be selling off sausages today and some other items later to anybody who would like to buy them. They're a bag of sausages, they're cooked, and they're $5. And they'll be in the fellowship hall. So thank you everyone. Robert? Had she lived, today would have been Mother's 100th birthday. So happy, happy, happily birthday to Mary today. Are there any birthdays here in the house? Okay. Any other announcements? All right. Today we are taking up a special offering for, um, for World Day of Prayer. And so I'm going to have Linda come up and introduce that uh, to us all. Today we have been blessed by the witness of Palestinian Christian women. These stories have shown us the power of marrying together in love. In a world with so many concerns, war, natural disasters, famine, homelessness, and domestic violence, it is inspiring to be part of a prayer and action movement that gathers people together from across Canada to make a difference. We believe in the power of prayer as we come together in our own lives, churches, communities, and when we are able to gather with others globally. <clears throat> in Canada, your offering funds, funds World Day of Prayer as well as grants for projects to restore hope to women touched by injustice. We dedicate the offering to this ministry of powerful prayer. May we open our hearts and give generously as we are able. The offering will now be taken.
Let's pray. <clears throat> Holy God, the burdens of this world are heavy, but we trust that you are with us, carrying them with us. May this offering be a symbol of our commitment to you, to the people of the Holy Land, and to taking action against the injustices of this world. We ask your blessing upon this offering, the hands who have offered it, and those who will receive it. Amen.
special announcements and